I am Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we would like to welcome Simon Franklin to our Film Composers Oscar shortlist panel for his work on Avatar, The Way of Water. Um, and as we're recording this, Simon, I think the movie is getting closer to the $2 billion mark uh, worldwide. You must just be so proud of the work that you did on this and ev everyone you know, attached to the movie because, you know, it's not just the box office behemoth, but the fans love it and it's getting all of this awards buzz. Um, talk, talk to us about that. Uh, well, I have to say, I, I, first of all, I'm astonished. I mean, you know, it's that thing we've been, I've been working on this for five years. So it's on a, uh, so there is, I'm, there's a sense of a relief that we, as, as well. <laughs> but there were 3,800 people working on this film. Um, I had, you know, my team, you know, we had a, I had a 105 piece orchestra, which we recorded in Los Angeles. Um, we had, you know, the, the numbers I had to write through, there's three hours of finished score in this film. Um, there's a lot more than three hours I had to write. I had about close to, I don't know, about five hours that I actually finished because of editing and revisions and all those things. So I think with anything with Jim there is a scale and there is an expectation i'm just so relieved that actually people in are liking the film i you know it's mm -hmm. uh it's yeah it's it's hugely satisfying um i'm astonished by the millions of people who are listening to the soundtrack it really just flabbergasts me mm -hmm. and you've been living in this avatar world for about two decades now you know overall because you were in the music department of the original film under composer James Horner. And then you scored the Disney World Pandora attraction and now of course mm. all the sequels. Uh, I'm curious, is there something you know now about this world that you wish you would have known 15, 20 years ago? So I, I think I, I I came in, you know, at the January 20, 2009 is when I started on A1. I think I, think I would have, um, the 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 depth to which we go, I think, is one of the things I would have I would I would have if I'd understand stood that earlier, and I should have done because I did I worked on Titanic with James and with Jim, um, but it is the attention to detail that I think makes this part of the journey, um, and I think if I had known now that it would take over so much of my life. Um, mm. I might have been, you know, that's that's something that I I think I would have uh, not anticipated because it has been, you know, many years of work. Um, I, I'm lucky I get to do other things as well. But, you know, like the Pandora, the park was five hours of music for the park. Wow. You know, so I've I've already written 10 hours of music for the various different parts of Avatar. Um, and there's obviously more, you know, it looks like we're not fired yet. <laughs> yes, there will there will be more sequels. Um, I understand. Um, there are so many fun new characters in in the Way of Water. I think my personal favorite is Spider, played by Jack Champion, mm -hmm. the ultimate outcast character, the human who lives with the Navi. Um, when a new character, either Spider or someone else that you want to talk about, when when they enter enter this world. Can you talk about the process of finding their voice through music, through instrumentation, and, and how long is that process? That was an that was an interaction that Jim and I had from the outset. He made me uh, December twenty seventeen. He asked me to read all four scripts, so wow. I've read two, three, four, and five. He said, "You won't know. You need to know the destination to understand the journey, to understand where you start." And the first thing I had to write was the song chord for Neytiri. And that, in some ways, is the th main theme for this film, because it is that idea of family. Jim said to me that he wanted a slightly more thematic film than Avatar 1, although there's some ph phenomenal themes. And I brought some of those elements from James Horner, which were totally we wanted to bring, not only to honor James, but also because it's a series. Um, but he said, I need something for the family. And so Zoe singing the song chord, which I then made into the main orchestral theme was the first thing I had to write. Then there was the connection between the Met Kaina and the sea. And that 
was a talking in the way that you're talking, you know, you're discussing how did I come up with that? And there's a subset, which is Payakan and Loak, that relationship, a boy and his Labrador. The Labrador may be 300 tons, but it's still <laughs> basically that, that, that story. Um, I look, Jim and I talked about the feeling of the music as well as, you know, so that an example would be, the scintillation of light through water as it hits the water bubbles and then the bottom of the ocean. And so I had to create sounds that, for Jim that made that sense of scintillation. But I also wanted a theme that, um, that had that sense of the mermaids calling as those kids jump into the water. And so those are the sort of things that we talked about thematically is how do you connect because you have to there has to be that sense of a, um, a theme that you can use often because mm. Avatar requires, so should we say, longer themes than many other films, so that my themes tend to be more extended. Um, but also something that you can use for when the kids jump in the water, but also when the Tulkoon arrive. That is a, a variation of the same thing. Uh, and then, you know, if we take the example of Loak and Payakan, I had to give a theme for Payakan that needed to have that sense of the scale of this Hulkoon, this 300 ton creature, but also that elegance and that balletic quality that he has when he's first, you see him going around in the water. Um, and I wanted to have that sense of his scale, but the beauty of, of him, and I use that often in that connection between him and Loak. Mm. I'm really interested in learning about the specific instruments you use to dif differentiate the two Navi tribes. You know, what were some of the big differences between the water tribe uh, instruments and music there compared to <clears throat> the forest tribe? So I had been responsible for the sounds of the non-orchestral sounds for Avatar 1. So the glowing forest, which I made out of this sort of gamelan bell types textures and um, and the rhythms, the, you know, that whole rhythmic approach to Avatar 1 was something I wanted to carry. But there was a this sort of glistening shimmer, the sound of bells that was Avatar 1. And the percussion often had that little bit of a metallic edge. Um, the Mekaina are a tribe of the sea. And I decided that they were, we, we would take them as being slightly, I don't want to say less sophisticated, but a more um, traditional tribe. And so I looked at the materials that I might be able to use for instruments. And so we created a load of instruments using bamboo and wood. I worked with a great guy called Chuck Jonke here in, in, um, in Los Angeles. We created a whole raft of sounds using clay pots, using bamboo, using uh, different types of things, but nothing metallic, so that I could get a different texture to the rhythmic approach that I was doing, and also to the woodwinds, because woodwinds are a big part of, of Avatar, this, the mm. sound of high whistles and things. And that gave me a, something that I could use as a differentiation between the forest and the sea. And that would be my starting point, I think, sonically. I love that. Um, and the weekend's song, uh, Nothing Is Lost, You Give Me Strength, that, that also made the Oscar shortlist for, for best song in addition to your score. Um, can you talk, you know, a little bit about the collaboration process with uh, Abel? So I had one name on my list. Now, um, so I, Jim said to me, are we going to have a song at the end of the film? And I said, if we are, we are only, this is the only person I want to work with. And I wrote down the weekend. And so we contacted him and he was touring and he said, and he, when he sort of uh, got a break, he went to New York and he saw the film with John Landau, the producer. And then we started this collaboration thing in September where initially he was in New York. So he and Swedish House Mafia, who were also producers of the track with me and wrote the music with me. I. I sort of do the more musical side, uh, you know, the the stuff. I brought the film with me um, mm. and they brought the sound of the weekend track with them. And then Abel wrote uh, uh, melody and lyric on top and they sent me a track. And I thought, this is great. Okay, they sent me some more material. 
they gave me the elements and then I started manipulating it like say hey about what about if we do this what about if I bring in the singers now for instance one of the things we talked about in terms of the sound that Kaina is I used the Polynesian singers from the because I wanted the sound of the vocals to be different and I brought some of them in for the beginning of the song then I used these large drums that we use in Avatar to try and find that link so that we had a song that grew from the film it was really important to Jim and me that this felt like a song that was connected to the movie and Abel wrote a beautiful lyric that is basically the sort of is is um uh Jake's lyric if you almost you have this thing of Jake's lyric being the weekend and Zoe's lyric being song chord and uh and then we just worked he he we would go back and forth and then sometimes we would show Jim lyrics and Jim would have uh, say hey how about you just change this I mean it was a true collaboration mm -hmm. um I came to eventually came to Los Angeles and we did the vocals here then I recorded the orchestra here and then uh we mixed it I I cannot speak highly enough of him he's phenomenal mm -hmm. well final question Simon are you able to give a one word tease about Avatar 3 you would just set the whole internet on fire Ash Ooh, that's a good one <laughs> thank you for chatting with us today we'll see you in a little bit at the the group panel okay brilliant